A portion of this video is sponsored by Spec. So after 30 days with the iPhone 15 Pro, I've really had some time to think about all of the changes that Apple has made, as well as conduct a couple of tests. And you may have some questions about my whole experience. Is the battery life trash? Is the action button actually useful? Do I really use USB-C? And how does the titanium hold up after 30 days? And maybe the most important question for you, should you upgrade to the new iPhone 15 Pro? Let's answer these questions. Now, Apple made a slight update to the hardware design of this phone with a more premium, lighter material titanium on the sides, as well as a softer feeling, more rounded profile on the edges of the phone. And after spending the past 30 days with this phone, I can say that I'm a huge fan. You see, iPhones have been increasing in weight ever since the iPhone 5. And funny story, when the iPhone 12 came out, I actually went back to the Apple store and exchanged my Pro model for the regular 12 because I thought the Pro was too heavy. So when I picked up the iPhone 15 Pro for the first time, I was surprised at how much of a difference that weight reduction really made in both the handling of the phone as well as the comfort of the phone. The rounded corners really make a big difference, especially when coming from the 14 Pro. Um, it doesn't dig into your pinky or your fingers, and it just feels really refined. Now, looking around the titanium frame, I haven't picked up any scratches on it, mostly due to the fact that I have been using a case, which brings me to today's sponsor, Spec. So if you are looking for one of the most rugged yet slim cases, you might wanna check out the Presidio 2 grip case. This case features Armor Cloud technology, which compresses and cushions your phone from falls of up to 13 feet, acting like airbags. The built-in grooves on the sides of the case are really nice for grip, but if you aren't a fan of the looks, you can also opt for the non-grip version. Both these cases have a soft touch finish, really nice clicky and covered buttons, a raised lip to protect your screen, and best of all, click lock. With click lock, not only can you use all of your existing MagSafe accessories, you can also purchase specific click lock accessories like this car vent mount and wallet. The way that click lock works is with this magnetically attracted bolt that automatically extends to meet this indentation in your case. So this is the click and this is the lock. Super satisfying. And once it's locked, it's not going anywhere. My favorite click lock accessory though is the standy grip. So not only is this a phone stand that works in portrait mode, as well as landscape mode. It also has a pretty neat flip out feature, which acts as a hand grip, as well as a notch to mount your phone onto your MacBook for continuity camera. If you're interested in any of these products, I'll have a link down below, and you can also use code Joshua15 to save 15% off of your purchase. Now, every year there seems to be somewhat of a visual indicator to tell whether you have the new iPhone or not. And this year, you guessed it, is the action button. Pretty funny because I've had friends come up to me and ask if I have the new iPhone, and when I show them, they almost always look at the action button and they're like, oh, that is the new iPhone. And then almost always, there's two questions that follow. First of all, what did you set your action button to do? And number two, is the action button actually useful? So there is a brand new action button menu inside of settings where you can change that shortcut to do a variety of things like activate your camera, the flashlight, and a voice memo. But in my opinion, the best use case for the action button is do not disturb. Now you might think that's a little bit boring and I mean, it is, but the truth is do not disturb is the modern day equivalent of the mute ring switch. We're not getting as many phone calls these days, but what we do get is hundreds of notifications each day. And to be able to control when you tune into those notifications is really important to me. And I love the fact that it's a physical button that also triggers a haptic with the vibration motor so you know when you've activated it. This means that even when your phone screen is off or if it's in your pocket, you can silence the notifications without having to look down at your screen and inevitably getting distracted by some notification. As simple as this button is, this is genuinely one of the best features about the new iPhone 15 Pro. And I've been using it pretty much every day. Day. Now, I do wish that Apple gave us a little bit more customizability with this action button, maybe a double tap or a triple tap on top of the press and hold. In my opinion, that would give this button a lot more functionality. And speaking of functionality, this is a good segue into possibly the most impactful change on the iPhone this year, USB-C. After pressure from the EU, Apple has finally put USB-C on their iPhones, and naturally, I was curious. How fast is the real-world data transfer speeds with the 10 gigabit per second USB-C port on the iPhone 15 Pro? So I conducted a little speed test. Now, the first thing I wanna find out was Lightning versus USB-C. So I took a two gigabyte video file and transferred it, and on Lightning, it took 54 seconds. If you ask me, that's pretty long. 54 seconds for a two gigabyte file, yeah, that's not good. But then with USB-C, it took 
six seconds. That's right, six seconds. So a whole nine times faster than Lightning. Now I shouldn't really be this surprised because um, USB 2.0 is just so antiquated and outdated. And so this is literally Apple catching up to modern day standards. But then I also wanted to test airdrop speeds versus lightning versus USB-C. So with that same two gigabyte video file, I airdropped from iPhone to iPhone, as well as from Mac to iPhone and vice versa. And here are the results. Surprisingly, airdropping from iPhone to iPhone only took 34 seconds, whereas phone to Mac took 42 and Mac to phone took 49. But maybe the most impressive thing is the fact that all of these airdrop tests were faster than lightning, which just goes to show how terrible Lightning really was. The fact that before the iPhone 15 Pro, we could airdrop files faster than we can transfer them over a cable is just absurd to me. Now keep in mind the USB-C cable that does come with your iPhone 15 Pro is gonna be limited to USB 2.0 speeds because this is mainly just a charging cable. To take advantage of the faster speeds, you are gonna wanna get a 10 gigabit per second uh, USB-C cable, like the one I have here. Literally just a cable I pulled off of my SSD. Now, am I personally going to connect my USB-C cable every time I need to get some files to my iPhone or from my iPhone to my Mac? No. In fact, most of the time, I'm probably just gonna use AirDrop as the files that I'm gonna be transferring aren't gonna be that big anyway, and so AirDrop, with all of its convenience, is just a better solution. But it is good to know that I now have a modern, fully capable port that can actually transfer files at a decent rate. Now, you can actually use the USB-C port to hook up a bunch of peripherals and accessories like SSDs, mice, keyboard, microphones, and something I think is actually gonna be really useful is the ability to take your SD card or micro SD card out of your drone or your GoPro and hook it up to your iPhone to preview the footage. So I've got my GoPro here. I'm gonna take out the micro SD card. So I'm gonna slot this micro SD card in here, put it into here. And so this is what that looks like. And now I'm gonna open up files and we'll now see a GoPro drive right here. And if I tap that, I can go into the folders and actually find the video that we just shot and play it with sound and everything right on my iPhone. And this is the useful part. You can actually crop down the video file into the section that you want hit done, save as a new clip, and then download that to the Photos app on your iPhone. I think that is a great feature. Now powering this phone is the brand new beast of a chip, the A17 Pro. And we already know this, Apple is great at making fast and efficient chips. With the iPhone 15 Pro, it really just blazes through everything that you throw at it. Not that it's any more noticeable than what I was getting on my 14 Pro, at least in everyday use cases. Now, I'm not a huge mobile gamer, but when I took a look at what some people were doing with this iPhone in terms of gaming, I was pretty blown away. Like the fact that you can pair a Bluetooth controller to your phone and use it as a full on console is just ridiculous and really can rival portable gaming devices like the Nintendo Switch. And with the USB-C port, you can even connect your phone to an external display. And I mean, just looking at the quality of these games, the iPhone is really approaching console-like levels of detail. Like honestly, I would consider that a good reason to pick up the Pro Max with the bigger screen if you are a mobile gamer. But yeah, gaming is just incredible. But one thing you can be certain of that will drain quickly when you're gaming is battery life. So in terms of battery life, of all of the battery tests I've seen out there, the iPhone 15 Pro actually performs the worst out of all of the iPhone 15s this year. So what's the verdict? Is the 15 Pro's battery trash? So in my real world usage, I'd say it's pretty average. It's not terrible, it's not the best. You can see that on most days, I'm actually hovering around 50% battery usage with about three and a half hours to even four and a half hours of screen on time. The thing is though, most of these days I am working from home and not really using my phone that heavily, but there was one day which I was out all day and I got about six hours of screen on time actually using my phone um, as intended, uh, taking a bunch of photos and videos, watching YouTube and browsing the web. Yeah, I mean, six hours is not bad. Now, one thing to take into consideration is I don't actually use the navigation app on my phone all that much. Since I have navigation built into my car, that's one thing that you may wanna consider is if you do use navigation or you do gaming or you watch a bunch of videos or record videos, those are all gonna drain your battery relatively quickly. So could battery life be improved? 
improved? I mean, yeah. I think especially with portable electronics, uh, battery life can always be improved and people are always gonna be wanting more. Uh, but with the 15 Pro, I find that it's more than adequate. Now, one setting I am turning on this year is in battery health and charging, and that is the 80% limit. On last year's iPhone 14 Pro, we saw that battery degradation went down to as low as 88% in certain iPhones. So this is one precaution I'm taking is to hard limit the battery charging to 80%. So I'll check back in in a year and we'll see how it's doing. Okay, so next up, let's talk about the cameras. So hardware wise, the cameras on the 15 Pro are actually the exact same as the 14 Pro. Now we do have a slight bump in resolution in the JPEGs. So this year we're getting 24 megapixel JPEG standard, whereas before we were getting 12 megapixels. There is a slight difference in quality when you really go in and pixel peep, but yeah, you're really not gonna notice these things unless you are really zoomed in. But then something interesting that I never thought I'd see in any smartphone camera is the ability to shoot log. So in the camera settings, if we go to formats and then down here, we see ProRes encoding, we can actually click that and hit log. And what this actually allows you to do is record actual log footage, which is a flat version with no color profile. And then in post, you can add in the saturation, the contrast and adjust the exposure yourself. Now this does take up a lot of storage. And as you can see, my max time right now is zero minutes. Uh, but what you can do is actually take advantage of the USB-C port again, plug in an external hard drive or an SSD. And now you will see that I have 272 minutes of recording and at the bottom here, it does say USB-C. I'm sure we'll be seeing maybe even cases now that will incorporate somewhat of an SSD mount on the back. Um, as this is now a really great feature for people who actually shoot with their iPhones. Now this year, the Pro Max model does get the 5X optical zoom, whereas the iPhone 15 regular Pro only gets 3X. And I think ever since Samsung came out with their 10X or I think 100X zoom, there seems to be this race to put bigger and more zoom into smartphone cameras. But like, why though? I'm sure there are some use cases like in nature photography or sports photography where that extra zoom would come into play. But for the normal everyday stuff, I'd rather just have a really high quality telephoto lens that's not too zoomed in so I can actually get some really good portraits out of it. And for me, I think the 3X is just at the right spot where it's not too much and not too little. And I'd rather that Apple focus on the optical quality of this lens rather than more zoom. But anyway, what's the verdict? 30 days later, am I happy with the iPhone 15 Pro? Um, without a doubt, this is my favorite iPhone yet. Despite the fact that smartphone innovation has significantly slowed down in the past few years, there are still refinements and improvements that can always be made. And this year, with all of the physical changes with titanium, the action button, USB-C, these are all little changes that add up to make the iPhone experience overall better. Now, should you upgrade if you already have the 13 or 14 Pro? Probably not, but if you have the 12 Pro or later, I think there are some really significant improvements um, that you're gonna experience for the first time, like ProMotion, better cameras, faster chip. But yeah, that's been it with the iPhone 15 Pro. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, consider subscribing to the channel. I'm trying to reach 200,000, so any help is greatly appreciated. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.